This training video was developed by the Statistical Services Centre at the University of Reading in the UK and is part of a range of resources aimed at researchers. This particular video looks at the subject of ownership in a shared data and document store. With a well-organised DTS, the project team always know where to find the latest versions of documents and data. And the process of archiving at the end of the project is made simpler. Many researchers don't like the idea of archiving, but increasingly it's becoming a requirement stipulated by the funding agencies. So for now, we will accept that this is something we need to work towards. The issue of data ownership and data access is something that many researchers are concerned about, especially when we talk about a DDS. We will address this issue in this video. Ownership is usually defined by a contract, often between the funding agency and the researcher. Check your contract to ensure that you know what this is. Also, it's a good idea to draw up an agreement that can be signed by all members of the project team. This ensures that everybody knows where they stand as far as data ownership is concerned. Wherever you store your DDS, the intellectual property rights of the contents remains the same. The ownership does not change according to the location. The real issue is who has access. At the basic level, you can think of the hard drive on your own PC as a DDS. It's a place for storing all the data and documents, and thus with anything in life, it can be well organised or a dump, or more likely something between these two extremes. If you work alone, then this is perhaps all you need, with of course a backup or two in case of disaster. Issues of access arise when your DDS is stored somewhere centrally, such as a shared network drive, in Dropbox, in Moodle, etc. In all these cases, you can control who has access and what level of access they have. For example, in the SSC, we have a file server where we store shared documents and archive materials, as well as individual staff backups. Each member of the team has read-write access to the shared documents, read-only access to the archive, and read-write access to their own personal backup space. We use a piece of software called Always Sync and set the local drive to synchronize with the network drive. We use the Windows scheduler to automate regular synchronizations. The network drive is itself backed up on a regular basis to an external eSATA drive that we store in our fileproof safe when not in use. Note that these examples show how we deal with everyday issues of backups and shared files. We're not promoting any particular commercial product or software and suggest you choose your own solution based on your own needs. In Moodle, users would need to enter their login name and password to access the system. You can decide who has access and what level of access each user has by assigning roles. One advantage of internet-based systems such as Moodle and Dropbox is that the files are available from anywhere with internet access. Of course, in any shared environment, there is the person or the custodian who actually manages the site. For the SSC file server, for example, a member of staff is given responsibility for managing the system, including setting the permissions. On the SSC Moodle site, where we have allocated space to CCRP projects as part of our contract with McKnight, SSC technical staff have full access to anything that's uploaded, but undertake not to use or manage your DDS unless you specifically ask us to do so. Ultimately, a shared DDS requires some degree of trust. If you have trust issues and prefer to keep everything to yourself, then that's your choice. But the concept of a DDS remains the same, whether it's on your own PC or somewhere shared. A well-organized DDS will save time and effort in the long term. Returning briefly to the trust issue, remember this works both ways. For example, we find that many researchers would like their MET service to give them access to historical, climatic, particularly rainfall data. There may be a cost issue, but often these climatic data are well managed 
and can be made available. However, many of these same researchers become very defensive when asked if others could have similar access to data from past surveys or experiments that they have managed. You cannot expect others to share their data and documents with you if you are not willing to share with them.